Hello, everyone. This is uh, Richard Wilson from the Hedge Fund Group, and I'm here in uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil, doing this webinar here today for you guys. And if you're not familiar with the Hedge Fund Group, um, we're an online networking association. We have about 33,000 or 34,000 members now. We offer a lot of free resources. Um, we have a free ebook, um, free blogs, free webinars such as this. We really try to do that just to generate relationships with people in the industry. And to date, we've just found it to be an effective way to do business. If we provide value first, it just becomes an easy way to get to know more professionals that work in the hedge fund industry. And that's really how we've grown the membership of the hedge fund group over the past few years. So we're just going to wait just another maybe 30 seconds here before we jump into the presentation. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to uh, send them in within the chat or a questions box that you might see within your webinar software. And at the end, we're going to try to take as many questions as we can. Um, I think we're going to fill up the full thousand people on the line today, so we're actually not going to be able to do voice questions, or they'll just be 80 or 90 people talking over each other. So we're just going to do uh, chat-based questions. I'll read them off and then try to answer them near the end. But I hope that you know what we share here today will help you a lot, whether you're launching your hedge fund career, um, transferring over from another area of investment or finance. Um, it should help. It's everything that I've learned that I think would be helpful and I can fit into a one-hour presentation. And we get a lot of questions every year, um, several thousand every quarter, about hedge fund career advice. And so we've uh, done a lot of research for people in the career in the industry and I uh, just developed a lot of resources in the past. We're going to use all of that in the presentation today. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. All right, so first off, you know, why is it important to, you know, spend 30 minutes or 45 minutes of your day today on this webinar? I know many of you are on your lunch break or had to, you know, take a break from your normal work day to, to be here. So obviously, you know, why should you be here? Um, first off, I'm just a true believer that, you know, no matter what challenge you're facing, there have been professionals who have faced that exact same challenge in very similar circumstances to what you're facing today. And if you can learn from those people and take advice from them, you might be able to speed up, you know, over a 30-year career, you might be able to speed up and move past three or five years of struggle or just slower progress. And so. We're just trying to be part of that solution here today, just providing really condensed advice uh, for your hedge fund career. Um, next, the other reason is if you don't know some of the common mistakes that pretty much everyone makes at some point in their career and lots of people make in the hedge fund industry, it can just, again, slow you down. Uh, maybe you won't get paid what you're worth or you'll end up in a dead-end job that you don't really you know, feel much passion for and that you're not that successful at because it's not a good match for your skills. And then last... Um, the final, the final slide of this presentation is by far the most important, um, but you won't be able to take advantage of that unless you take notes along the way. So if you really want to you know, make use of your own time, uh, it's good just to get a pen and paper or a pencil and just jot down some quick notes just on two or three things that you can take action on today or this week that are going to make a real difference in your hedge fund career. So this is a diagram of what I refer to as the three circles strategy. I believe Jim Collins refers to it as the, the hedgehog strategy. Um, but it can be a real career path decision-making tool for you in your career. And here's how it works. Um, the top circle, uh, the darker blue, is about what you're passionate about, what you like doing, uh, what you have fun doing, and what you just are naturally drawn to. The green circle um, is about what you could be really great at, what's part of your natural DNA, what's part of your experience, what's part of your strengths. Um, and then the light blue section here is about what drives your economic engine. So uh, what's going to make a lot of money? What could be very profitable in five or ten years? Or what career path could guide you to being compensated very handsomely for your work? And the point of considering all three things, what you're passionate about, you know, what's part of your natural DNA, and then what could make a lot of money, if you only make decisions 
which fit all three of those criteria, um, then you can do very well. Because what happens is then you don't get stuck. For example, everybody knows someone who's tried to make a career, you know, playing in a band or being a solo artist. And that might be all about, you know, what you're passionate about. Sure, some people do make a lot of money doing it, but um, that might be an example of somebody just going solely based on, you know, what they're passionate about. Or someone else might go into investment banking or commercial real estate just because you might make a lot of money. But maybe it's not a good match for, you know, their passions or for their natural abilities. Maybe their natural abilities are more analytical where commercial real estate might be more focused on, you know, sales and relationship development. And you can really use this within the hedge fund industry. I've used it within my own career and my own business. Uh, when I was in college, I did a internship with a hedge fund in Europe doing leading indicator trading research. And uh, while I was doing that research, I realized that, um, you know, while maybe I'd position myself to be highly compensated doing trading research, um, you know, it wasn't something I was really passionate about, and I'm not sure that it was something I could be the best in the world at. So um, that kind of led me more towards uh, marketing roles, capital raising roles, and that's what led me towards working as a third-party marketer and raising capital for different types of hedge fund managers. So this is not something that's, uh, it looks theoretical, but it really is not something that's very theoretical. It's really very real world, and you can use this you know, starting today with almost any type of decision you make related to business or your career. It's just something you just might want to jot down, you know, keep in a business journal if you have one, and just kind of keep in mind whenever you come across an important decision point in your life. Um, another rule you can live by is never to say yes to an opportunity which does not fill all three of these criteria points. So um, I've made a video on this topic, uh, Top 5 Hedge Fund Career Mistakes. You might have seen it. Um, so I'm going to go through these relatively quickly because this might be, you know, old hat for some of you. Um, number one, the most important thing in the hedge fund industry is to not come across as being annoying. And that's the shortest way of, of stating it. But in other words, don't email somebody six times a week um, or email them, call them, you know, fax them multiple times in a day or you're just going to turn people off very quickly. And there's two reasons why that is. The first is that the hedge fund industry is relatively small uh, compared to other industries. And hedge funds generally get many inquiries about jobs, uh, especially nowadays with the recent economy um, not being as stable as it used to be. So it's really important to come across as someone who values the other person's time. Otherwise, they're not going to be interested in working with you or interviewing you at all. Uh, the other reason is that if you think about it, the most valuable employers or the people who you really want to work with or work for are probably going to be the busiest people. If somebody has $800 million under management and they're running five different strategies which are all growing quickly, they're going to be very busy and very consumed by their business. They're not going to have much time or patience to deal with eight page long emails or multiple inquiries about something because you're feeling impatient or anxious about uh, being hired in the industry. So just make sure you don't come across as annoying. Um, next, don't be overconfident. Um, I know some people have, um, you know, a virtual portfolio through a Yahoo stock uh, system, or they have a great, you know, trading algorithm, or they have great um, pedigree from an Ivy League institution or a big firm. And it's just important not to come across as overconfident because each hedge fund manager and these principals are probably relatively confident in how they do things. And if you seem overconfident, it might seem like you're not going to mesh with their culture. So just make sure you don't come off as uh, arrogant or overconfident during the process. Uh, next is no long resumes and emails. And this comes right back to respecting the other party's time. Um, I always say that your resume should not be any longer than one page long. Even if you have 25 years of experience, um, less is more because nobody has time to read a two or three page email. And they usually just won't. They'll skim it. And then if you have your stuff spread out over three pages, that same 10 seconds is going to be spent over three pages, and they'll actually absorb less than if you have a one-page resume. Uh, emails, again, keep short. I usually try to keep emails to parties that we don't already have a relationship with down to four or five sentences, and that's kind of a good rule to go by when you're networking in the industry. Uh, next is uh, generic is boring. Uh, while many hedge funds 
like people who can wear many different hats and have diverse skill sets um, and be responsible for many different things. You don't want to be generic, so make sure that you know, even if you are somebody who's an analyst, maybe you have experience in managing service providers or maybe you have experience in you know, some type of hedge fund marketing uh, strategies or in developing marketing materials. Something that's just going to give you something, an edge, uh, an information edge, a knowledge edge, an experience edge over other people who are going to be applying for those same positions. And last is passion is not enough. We get a lot of emails from people who say, and uh, literally say, you know, I will do anything to get in the hedge fund industry. I'm willing to work from the bottom up. Um, you know, I'll do anything. I just want to get in the industry and work in, work for a hedge fund. And that's great, and it's a great attitude to have, but sometimes we don't see the connection between that attitude and then doing the hard work that's needed to gain the knowledge that's required and the experience that's required to really get into the industry. So just make sure that if you're one of those people that has that attitude that you, you know, get some leverage on yourself and use that energy to actually you know, put a work plan into place, take action, and do things that will move you closer to working in the industry in the position you want. And uh, again, if you can avoid these mistakes, you'll be ahead of most of the other people that are applying for these same positions, because most people um, don't go through webinars or trainings on working in the hedge fund industry. And some of these things are very obvious, but everybody forgets these when they're busy or excited um, or anxious over a decision. So here's uh, my top six hedge fund career tips. Um, it was interesting as I was looking through the, the registrants, we had about 1,500 people register for the webinar. And I was expecting um, a lot of students and people early on in their hedge fund career, but I also saw a lot of people who worked either in compliance or trading um, or in investment banking and other industries and are looking to transfer over to work for a hedge fund or work with hedge funds. So um, these tips should apply to, to everybody on the call and hopefully you find them valuable. Um, the first is to become a hedge fund student. Uh, read a book every two weeks, subscribe to free newsletters. Uh, I'll give you links to a few later. Uh, listen to podcasts on hedge funds, read newspaper articles. Um, our team offers the CHP designation. It's a hedge fund training program. And then we're going to talk later about creating your own hedge fund mastermind group as well. So these are just tips on increasing your knowledge, moving up the learning curve as quickly as possible. If you're wondering how you can gain the knowledge so you don't feel like an outsider, these are some tips you could jot down for things you could start taking action on today that would help you feel more like an insider when you're going to interviews and networking with people. Uh, next, um, use a three-circle strategy we just discussed. I know I mentioned this twice already, but that is, um, you know, on purpose because I think this is so important. Uh, next, use two or three career mentors. Um, try to find people who are willing to spend 30 minutes with you each month and give you career advice, um, at least within the investment industry, if not specifically on hedge funds. Next uh, piece of advice that is probably one of the most valuable if you're looking to start your hedge fund career would be to complete at least one internship, and ideally two to three internships. And lots of people email us saying that they just need an entry-level job because they don't have time for an internship. And I really just don't believe that's the case for anybody. Um, if you want an internship, you can not only find one, you can fit it into your schedule. Even if you are married with two kids and working full-time, you can find a hedge fund that needs, for example, leading... Uh, trading indicator research. Um, you can find a hedge fund that needs marketing research. You can find a hedge fund that needs startup help. Um, worst case scenario, you can work with someone five or eight hours a week and gain some valuable experience and insights into how hedge funds work and how your potential role might be in terms of what you'd be responsible for producing each day. So um, I really encourage you to you know, be creative, work for free until you prove your value and asked to be paid, you know, work part-time in two or three internships, maybe all together you'll be paid enough to get by. Uh, it can be really valuable and make a huge difference in your career if you get that ex valuable experience versus kind of generic entry-level experience. Uh, number five here, something I talk a lot with hedge fund managers related to hedge fund marketing is developing your own unique selling proposition. Um, it's often referred to as a USP. 
uh, within the marketing world. And what this is is something you can state within a single sentence, which is about the benefits you can provide to a hedge fund. So it could be related to, like we were talking about before, about not being generic. It could be related to the fact that although you have you know, two years of analyst experience and a business degree from, business, from uh, Boston College, you also have done a year's worth of strategic marketing planning um, in a business industry, and you can combine that to help the hedge fund develop their own strategic business plan or marketing plan in addition to your analyst role. So it's just something unique you can add to the table. Um, and then my last piece of advice here, which is probably one of the most valuable uh, within this webinar, is just to try to land the unadvertised job. All of my uh, positions I've had throughout my whole career have been jobs which never were posted on Monster. They're never posted on the Alborn Village or Hedge World or Hedge Fund Blogger. Um, there were positions that literally did not exist until I contacted the firm and sold them on, you know, hiring me for the position. Um, I did this once by calling 10 firms in the Yellow Pages and met with two or three. One of them gave me a job. I also went to the Alborn Village in college to get that internship with the European hedge fund and was hired by a hedge fund that wasn't hiring. And I also, while entering the third-party marketing world, I went to a third-party marketing association uh, where they have many independent marketers that help raise capital for hedge funds and um, contacted many of them, met with them, and actually got a position in that industry um, just by going out there being proactive. And many times small businesses aren't actively hiring people, but they will if they find someone who's really talented who can add value to their business. So just really keep that in mind because most businesses in the hedge fund world are small businesses. So now we're going to go over some overlooked hedge fund job opportunities. Um, the number one overlooked hedge fund job opportunity is within the area of working for a service provider. So within the hedge fund industry, there really is an ecosystem of businesses that all work together to make the hedge fund business work. And there are some very large hedge funds that do maybe 80 or 90 percent of their process in, processes in-house but 80 or 90 percent of all hedge funds outsource a lot of their business activities to outside firms. Um, they might work with six or eight different outsourcing firms to outsource operational issues, accounting, auditing, marketing, um, CRM related issues, uh, graphic design, compliance, legal work, and or trading. And with each of those types of firms, there is someone who's running a small business who's grown expertise in an area such as, um, say, trading research. And that means that there's a firm, for example, I know one firm creates um, retail channel research so they can give research to hedge funds on what's happening in the retail markets um, very quickly so they can have kind of leading um, indicators of what might happen to retail type businesses. They can just give them a, a slight information edge over competitors. And if you want to work in producing trading research for hedge funds, there's many firms which specialize in doing only that. And if you work for one of them, it's very uh, specific niche training in that area. Um, you get to learn very specific and valuable skills that are more valuable than if you get investment banking experience or work as a financial analyst within a big corporation. Um, because this is a one-to-one -one match for probably exactly what you'd be doing within a larger hedge fund. And you could spend your whole career working for a hedge fund service provider and still be compensated very well and have a, you know, a satisfying career. But it's also a great experience to be able to you know, leap over to work directly for a hedge fund at some point. So uh, don't overlook this. I, I see almost nobody talking about this while they email us, and I think it's a huge opportunity. You'll have less competition going here than when you go to hedge funds. The next uh, overlooked opportunity that is constantly kind of renewing itself in terms of the availability of it out there is hedge fund startups. Uh, there's hundreds of hedge funds started every year, um, and each one of them could use interns. If you meet them face-to-face, -face, have lunch, complete an informational interview, uh, meet for coffee, meet them at a networking event, introduce yourself, and maybe have two or three things on hand that you know typical hedge fund startups may need help with, 
um, that can really you know make a big difference. You could suggest helping them with operational issues. You could help you could help them with the business side of things. So to start with, you might not even need a lot of hedge fund knowledge per se. If you have some business management knowledge, you could just help run their business because hedge funds are really small businesses and they need people to take care of business issues and um, business challenges which come up. So you could be kind of a you know a business project executor for a small hedge fund possibly to get your foot in the door. Um, lots of hedge funds you know need help raising capital. You could help them with developing marketing materials, reaching out to potential investors. There's really dozens of areas where you could pitch yourself as being someone who can just help them get started because in their mind their first three or five years will probably be pretty painful. Um, it's pretty hard to raise capital when you're a small hedge fund and have a short track record and most hedge funds do not raise as much capital as they first expect to. So I would uh, encourage you that if you develop a relationship with a hedge fund manager or two, keep in touch with them. At first, maybe they'll bring someone on at a high salary or try to do things all themselves, but I believe eventually they'll realize more and more how much help they do need or how much their business could benefit by having additional help on board. So try to meet with uh, local hedge fund managers um, that are starting up and you know talk to them about how you can help them improve their business. The benefit, um, you know, while working for service providers is great niche training. The real benefit for hedge fund startups is that you get to wear many different hats. You get diverse experience, um, and you get the maximum amount of responsibility in the smallest amount of time. Many times, if you're hired to be a marketer, you're also going to help with operations and business issues and completing RFPs and different, you know, investor relations related issues. So. It's something that's uh, you know important to keep in mind is often overlooked. And one question, which I was going to make a separate slide, but did not, was referring to you know what's different about working in the hedge fund industry. If you work as a compliance expert or a trader, um, or you're a student, and you're looking to you know work in hedge funds, and you're thinking, wow, you know I don't know much about hedge funds. You know it seems very challenging. It seems like there's a big wall to get in. I feel like an outsider maybe. Um, there, there are two differences, um, but there's not that many differences. So don't be too intimidated by it. Um, first off, most hedge funds are more entrepreneurial than the average business. Um, some of them are bootstrapped, others are not. But you really um, should just recognize that the principals of the firm have a lot of their own money and time invested, and it's different than working for a large corporation. And likewise. Unlike a large corporation, they're very results driven. They want people who every day are going to be executing, getting things done. And like one hedge fund manager told me, if you know somebody at my company is not working from the minute they get here till the minute they leave, then they're not working at our our hedge fund anymore because we just have so many things we need to get done and execute on. They don't want to hire people who are not drivers and are not executors. So, um, so that's important to know. Uh, those things are emphasized more in the hedge fund industry than I've seen in other business industries. But the important thing to remember is that niche knowledge is really what you need to get in. Uh, experience is more important than anything else, but when you're starting from ground zero and you're thinking, how am I going to adjust myself to work in the hedge fund industry, moving up that learning curve and really building your knowledge within the hedge fund niche is the most important thing that you can focus on to prepare yourself to work in the industry. Uh, it lets you kind of speak the language of hedge fund managers, lets you understand what they're talking about. Um, during interviews, you come off as much more well-versed and intelligent. Just by the types of questions you ask, you're going to come across as a better fit for a position if you're really knowledgeable um, about the industry. And now here we're going to go through some quick uh, resume tips. I'm going to go through this page relatively quickly because we're about 30 minutes in the call now, and I know that Many of you probably have worked in several professional positions before, so I don't want to bore you here. Um, again, never have your resume be more than one page long. Always start with action bullet points. Uh, include tangible, verified results. Sometimes I see resumes which talk about how the person you know, synthesized strategic plans to improve the company's prospects. And it really doesn't mean anything. It just, it just sounds made up. You really want to focus on, you know, raise $200 million in capital from family offices and wealth management firms in four months. Something like that, which is very, 
you know, it's time constrained, it's specific, it's tangible. Everybody knows what you mean, regardless of whether they were there working at the company with you or not. So make sure your resume reads like that, very tangible and, you know, verified actions. Uh, always start with your strongest experience or education. If you have no experience, um, but you have an MBA and you completed some strategic projects in school related to hedge funds, or you did some training program related to hedge funds, then put that at the top of your resume. If you have a lot of great experience, but you didn't even graduate from high school, then obviously you'd put the experience at the top. Uh, if you've never published anything, um, I would encourage you to get to work and start writing and synthesizing what you're learning about hedge funds or about um, analytics or about marketing, if that's your niche. And just start writing a newsletter, a blog, um, self-publish a book. That's something I did uh, when I was completing my MBA. And it, it really just helps you synthesize your knowledge. And having something tangible you can show potential employers or clients down the road really makes a big difference. And it's just one more thing that can set you apart from the competition out there. Um, just a reminder, if you're within the CHP program, we have a resume template you can use just to make sure your resume looks professional. It might just save you a half hour, an hour of you know, reformatting your own if you need to fit it into one page. And then make sure you take off experience, which is not directly relevant. It's better to have more white space on your resume than talk about how maybe you worked for you know, managing your cousin's dry cleaning business as your first job out of college. So just make sure it's directly relevant because it'll, it'll take away from your positive experience and training if you have non-relevant experience there. So now we're going to talk about developing your own hedge fund mastermind group. Um, first is it's important to know that you're the sum of what you're exposed to every single day. Uh, and this comes from, you know, many areas of psychology have, have confirmed this and many business and um, kind of success coaches talk about this a lot. Um, there's a CD in a book called The Strangest Secret uh, by Earl Nightingale, which is really good. And it, it talks about this very same concept. Um, and basically all of this idea revolves around the idea that who you'll be in two years from today. So in 2012, on January 12th, you know, you will be the sum of what you read, who you discuss ideas with, and what inputs you allow into your life. So if you, you know, read books, go to training programs, um, you know, complete internships, uh, complete your degree, hang out with people who are very positive, um, who have accomplished a lot in their life, who have high goals. Um, you know, it's going to be a world of difference of where you are in two years than if you spend your time watching TV, going to the movies twice a week, trying to beat the latest, you know, Call of Duty video game, um, or hanging out with people who are pessimistic, pessimistic and complaining about the economy and complaining about the government and talking about how the hedge fund industry is impossible to get into. So, you know, just take the the boring corporate job that might be more available near you. So it really will affect who you are. And this, made, this has made a huge difference in my life. And um, I really think if you put this to work and if you write down nothing else today, this might be something that can really help you move forward in the hedge fund industry. Because uh, most people just don't put the effort into designing their career or their life to really push themselves forward as fast as possible. And what we're talking about here on this page of the presentation is creating a mastermind group so that you can control or at least improve the inputs in your life. Um, a mastermind group, just for a quick definition, is a group that you can meet with once every week or two, um, at least once a month, that's going to provide you with advice, feedback, and it's usually a two-way street. Usually you provide them with something of value Well, they also provide you with something of value, uh, some type of advice. And this can be made up of professionals in your industry, successful investment professionals, um, other ambitious or proactive students or early career professionals. Um, and then a few points in my career, I couldn't find enough professionals who wanted to actually get on the phone once every two weeks or meet in person every two weeks and talk about career progress and what you're learning in business. I just had a hard time connecting with people like that at some points. And so what I did was substitute some of those relationships for, you know, reading more books. If you are looking to be an analyst or a trader or a hedge fund manager or a marketer, then you can read books on hedge funds, read, book on, read books on self-improvement, read books on positive psychology, read books on 
your niche area, such as, as trading. Uh, you can look at uh, research done related to trading or traders who have written books or white papers. Um, if you start searching, there'll be almost no end to the amount of information you can consume on your niche topics um, related to your career goals. And so I would encourage you to not say, well, I don't know any of these people in the first three bullet points. Try to find at least one or two. And if you can't find very many or any, at least, you know, go back to what I mentioned before. Try to read a book every two weeks or just add more positive inputs in your life so you'll get more out uh, within the next few years. And uh, Peter Drucker is famous as saying, you know, that we live in a knowledge economy and most people nowadays are knowledge workers. And in the hedge fund industry, you know, we're not stamping out widgets in a factory. We're not creating car parts. We're not doing, uh, you know, typical kind of blue-collar manufacturing work at all. It's all knowledge work. Everything we do is related to knowledge work. And so this is especially true in the hedge fund industry and with your hedge fund career. And it's that those who can grow their specialized knowledge more quickly, grow themselves as an asset, and as a direct result, are worth more. In a knowledge economy, knowledge is an asset. And every business and person is you know, interested in increasing the value of their assets. And one overlooked way is by controlling your inputs so that your specialized hedge fund knowledge really grows quickly because that's going to grow what you're worth in the marketplace. Um, now real quick, as we mentioned in the beginning, uh, the hedge fund group runs the CHP designation. Um, it's a two-level program. First level is about hedge fund fundamentals. The second level, you can specialize. So it's kind of like a an MBA program or an undergraduate program where the first half is generic, make sure everybody gets the basics of hedge funds down. And then the second level lets you specialize. So if you want to work in due diligence, you can complete the level two module in due diligence. And same for marketing and sales or portfolio analytics. And the reason we did this webinar is it's really relevant to the things we're trying to provide people within the CHP designation. We provide a lot of career coaching within the program, uh, resume advice and feedback, and it just helps people advance their business career. We provide over 60 educational videos. Um, you can add the CHP designation to your resume to make it stronger, increase your specialized knowledge within an area, and just speak the, speak the industry language more fluently so you can just move forward in your career, hopefully more swiftly. So here is probably uh, the most important slide or part of this presentation that we'll be talking about today. And that is uh, truly what I believe is the secret to success. And oftentimes in thing, oftentimes when people are looking for a shortcut or a secret or you know the magic way of doing something, um, if someone tries to sell you that shortcut, it's usually too good to be true and it sounds too good to be true and most people are skeptical, skeptical of it because they should be. And this advice is really really no different, but it's not, it's not difficult. Um, the advice is to, to be proactive in taking risks and taking action every day, and then you'll learn quickly and uncover hidden opportunities. In the hedge fund industry, uh, many people are you know, unsure of what first steps to take. They're you know, worried about, should I email the hedge fund manager? Should I call him? Should I fax him? Should I send him a letter in the mail? And, um, you know, if you think about it, if, if there's a tiger, you know, in Africa on the savanna and he sees a gazelle and a zebra, he doesn't sit there for 30 minutes and not do anything. He, he goes after one. He goes after the closest one. He takes action. And um, I saw a statistic showing that only one out of 20 uh, in the animal kingdom, only one out of 20 hunts is actually successful. Most of the time, these animals fail at hunting. And the same is true in business, and the same is true in improving your career and running your, your hedge fund career, most of the times when you try something, it probably won't work. Um, but that's no reason to stall and not take action. A lot of the people that we work with and hear from are kind of stuck in this mode of planning in their mind of what they're going to do eventually or what they're going to do in 2010 and part of 2011 or, you know, in June 2010, you know, that's when I'll have, you know, everything in line and I can approach these hedge fund managers with more confidence or, you know, at this point I'll have six years of experience or my degree will be done. And so things are put off and people plan forever and they get in this analysis paralysis mode. And um, 
the real secret to success is just to get yourself out of that and take action every single day. Um, the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul wrote a great book called um, Business Success Principles, and he sold over $100 million worth of his books. And he said the same thing, that every single day he would just do one thing to market his books, just one thing. Not 10 things, not 100 things a month, just one thing every business day. In over three years, that means he had done 600 different things to market his book. And guess what? The average author does maybe six things, if any, to market their own books. And so you can take the same lesson and use it in your hedge fund career. And just every day, take one action. You know, contact at least one hedge fund manager every day. Or, you know, one day, schedule out your next two weeks and find 10 things you could take action on. You know, improve your hedge fund resume one day. The next day, contact hedge fund managers. The next day, research more hedge fund managers you could contact later on. The next day, try to form your mastermind group and send out emails to eight or ten people. Um, it's really just a matter of, you know, planning for success for yourself. And what, um, what lots of people, I think uh, Evan Pagan and... Um, one other professional, his name isn't coming to my mind right now, call it, you know, getting leverage on yourself or making your success inevitable. And getting leverage on yourself is basically, you know, creating habits so that every day you have a habit of doing things which are going to move you forward. There's a quote that goes, um, first you make your habits and then your habits create you. And it said that about 96% of everything we do is habitual. The way you brush your teeth, what you eat in the morning, what you start to work on, do you check your email first, what you do right before you go to bed. Um, everything we do, almost everything, is habitual. And so if you make the habit of taking one action first thing every day, then that's just going to be something that's going to become automatic and become very pow powerful for your career. And this is something that... Um, that I did, I talked about creating an own, your own publication um, and being able to put that on your resume and bring that to job interviews. And that might seem like the most unrealistic thing that I mentioned in this whole webinar, but it's something that I took from someone named Jeffrey Gittimer, who said he had an average career until he was in his 40s, and then all he did was started writing one page a day, and he got some newspaper columns going, he got a newsletter going, and now he's paid more than Colin Powell for his speeches, and his phone rings off the hook with new clients that want to work with him. And the point is, he promised the same secret to success. And he said, I'll give you my most valuable million-dollar piece of advice because I know that 99% of you will ignore it and won't actually take the actions to put it into place because it actually takes hard work. It's not easy. Um, and so I'd really encourage you to take this seriously. And if you forget everything else I've talked about today, this is the number one most important thing. Um, just to take action every day on improving yourself and your hedge fund career. Um, another quote by Brian Tracy. Oh, let's go back here. Another quote by Brian Tracy is that um, if you want what if you want to have what others don't, you have to do what others won't. In other words, do the work that others are not willing to do, and you'll get the results that others wish they could get. If you want to work in the hedge fund industry and you have that attitude of, I'm going to do whatever it takes to work for a hedge fund, or I'm going to do whatever it takes to start my hedge fund, then just realize that also has to convert into, I'm going to do the work, that, and I'm going to keep on doing the work that others are not willing to do. Because successful people you know, may dislike doing the same work that unsuccessful people dislike doing, but they do it anyways because that's the cost of being really successful. So uh, that really is true in the hedge fund industry because lots of people give up, I believe, too quickly, whether they're running their own hedge fund or trying to get in the industry. And I think we've already hammered these points home, so I'm going to move through this pretty quickly. But uh, lazy people often make up excuses, plan forever, blame the economy, blame people around them, blame the boss, the government. And what's interesting is I've personally met and had lunch with and done seminars with professionals that are worth over $10 million dollars. Um, I think everyone can agree that means they're relatively successful if they created that own wealth for themselves. And not a single one of them were laid-back people that work a four-hour work week, uh, quote-unquote. These are all very hardworking people that take action every single day to improve their business and improve their, their own knowledge and skills. So I think that's uh, important to note. And then the last piece here um, was I was recently in Los Angeles for a training program and there's a lot of small business CEOs and sales professionals there. And 
there was a lot of guest speakers as well, and there's actually, I think, seven or eight different guest speakers. And I took a lot of notes during the program, eight or nine pages of notes, and um, I narrowed it down to three or four bullet points I could take away. And what I realized while reviewing the notes is the one thing, the only thing that was common among all of these people's advice was that speed of implementation is the most valuable skill that you can grow. Being able to quickly take an idea, for example, a few pieces of advice from this webinar and put them into place today. Uh, you can find an hour, you know, sometime today or this evening if you found the time for the webinar. You know, to put some of these things into place and just start now or start tomorrow morning, no matter what, you know, get it done. So it's just something that um, has been really valuable to me more recently and thought I could share with you guys. So here are a few resources to um, take action today if you'd like to. Um, we offer a free hedge fund ebook. Um, we update it usually twice a year. Um, sometime probably in Q2 of 2010 we'll be updating it again. If you want to download it, it's at hedgefundsbook.com. And that's hedgefunds, plural, book.com. And it's 100% free to download. Uh, we also have a free hedge fund newsletter, which I think many of you are already subscribed to. And that is online at hedgefundblogger.com. And again, that's hedgefund, singular, blogger, with two Gs, dot com. And then uh, third, as we already mentioned, we run Uh, third, as I already mentioned, we run a online hedge fund training and certification program. Um, what's unique about it is there's no testing centers or anything. It's all truly online. And it can really help you move up the learning curve and your specialized knowledge. But more importantly, we offer free career resources. So um, if now is not the right time or if you um, would just like to learn more about hedge fund careers, you can go here to this link for free. It's at hedgefundcertification.com forward slash library.html. And for those of you who are just listening to the audio, again, that's hedgefundcertification.com forward slash capital L library.html. And there we have a couple of videos for free and then a dozen articles you can read for free all about hedge fund resumes, careers, and uh, just some good video advice there on uh, mistakes people make in their hedge fund career. Um, the CHP program opens for registration twice a year. Um, one of those times is actually this Friday at 2 p.m. Um, we have 300 people within each session and then once the 300 uh, slots are filled within the program we close down registration for four or five months and then when the next session opens we open up again to another 300 people. Um, the link below is where you can register on Friday if you'd like to. It's hedgefundcertification.com forward slash capital E enrollment dot html. And so now we're actually going to take questions. And um, I see that we have a lot of questions that have already come in over chat. So what I'm going to do, um, as I explained when the call was first beginning, we have um, almost the full 1,000 professionals on the line and if we opened it up to voice questions there would just be you know probably 80 or 90 people talking at once and it wouldn't be productive for anybody so what we're going to try to do is just scroll down through these questions answer as many as I can and I'm going to talk relatively quickly um, at the expense of the call being a little bit less clear but hopefully getting through many of these questions before uh, this hour is up and we've got about 12 minutes left so the first question I got before um, the program even started was about the future of the hedge fund industry. And actually, if you go to YouTube and you search for hedge fund training or future of the hedge fund industry, um, you'll find videos made by myself or by the hedge fund group. Click on the hedge fund group um, account name and you'll see all the videos we have on YouTube. And there's a video on the future of the hedge fund industry, and I explain my views there. I believe the hedge fund industry is only becoming more diverse and strong, and I think it's going to be a great place to work for a long time to come. Um, I also have somebody here asking for a copy of the PowerPoint presentation we just went over. Um, we're actually not making the PowerPoint or the video recording of this available to the general public. Um, 
but if you're a member of the CHP designation, um, we're going to put a video recording of this within the Hedge Fund Premium training platform, which you get free access to within the CHP. So if you're within the CHP, you'll be able to access this later um, or refer to it later if you want. Um, another question here is about different trends in the hedge fund industry and also about mathematical model trends. Um, again, on YouTube, if you search for top four hedge fund industry trends, you can see a video I just published on that topic. Um, related to mathematical models, more people now are afraid of black box, truly algo algorithmic um, trading strategies now than ever before. Um, there's a statistic that came out saying that 80-some percent of all investors will not invest in something unless they understand it. So if you're looking to launch a hedge fund based on a model you've developed or work for one, I would just really encourage you to do your research first before you go work for one. And then also, if you're about to launch one, make sure that you show enough transparency that people can have confidence in what you're doing. And the more pedigree you can add to your team, the better it's going to be for you. Um, Here's another question about, can I get a list of hedge funds I could contact for employment purposes? Um, yes, we do provide that to alumni within the CHP program. The reason we don't provide it to everybody is that you can see just on this webinar, we had 1,500 people register, and uh, hedgefundblogger.com gets about 10,000 page views a day. And if we put a list out there of hedge fund managers' contact details, they would probably get literally a thousand emails a day and we would become their enemies instead of their friends and that's the opposite of what we're trying to do because we work with many hedge fund managers uh, and helping them with their capital raising and capital raising and the management of their business so we do offer it but we we have to limit it to people in the CHP designation or it would be worth nothing to anybody um, next we have questions where could a student be looking to gain credentials um, to work with hedge funds. Uh, the three quick ways would be just grow your specialized knowledge as quickly as possible. The cheapest way to do that is by reading books. Complete internships if you have to work for free to begin with. Um, and then you know, the CHP program can help, but uh, there's a lot you can do that really doesn't cost much money. It's just about taking action every day so you can learn more and meet in person with more hedge fund managers all the time. We have a question about what is a hedge fund mastermind group. Um, I believe this question probably came in before we covered that, so I'm going to skip that. Okay. And I apologize. I see the uh, sound was cutting out during parts of the program. Um, we'll make sure and follow up, and if the audio is too bad, we'll just send everybody the PowerPoint and some notes along with it so that, uh, so that you get the full value out of this webinar. Um, here's a question about the benefits and drawbacks of working at a fund of funds company. I think that working at a, a fund of hedge fund is a great opportunity. It's similar to working for a small hedge fund in that you can get a real diverse set of experience. Oftentimes, a fund of fund will work with many different types of hedge funds. You'll get exposure to all of their different strategies and ways of running their businesses, and you'll get really familiar with hedge fund due diligence and performance measurements. And those are things which can be valuable while working for an allocator, such as a um, large institution like a pension fund or a family office or an endowment fund, or it can be valuable working for a hedge fund and helping them raise capital from fund of hedge funds because you've been on the other side of the fence and you know how they work. Um, it's something I didn't mention here, but maybe should have, that fund of funds is a really good place that you can um, gain experience in the industry. Uh, some examples of service providers. Um, I can provide a lot of examples on, on hedgefundblogger.com. If you visit that blog, on the right-hand side, you'll see some, some badges, some small graphics from TradeStation Prime and Investment Law Group in the Malik Law Group. Um, also, if you click on the service provider directory link at the top, you'll see all different types of service providers. So you can go there and apply for positions. The Alborn Village has a lot of service providers. You can search for them on Google and email them through the Alborn Village. Also, Hedge World has a service provider directory, which is free to access. 
So those are all great places to go and apply for positions. Um, here's a question about will hedge funds not be outsourcing reporting requirements to third parties? Could that be an opportunity? Um, I believe that hedge funds are going to have to do more and more reporting. Uh, so whether you work inside of a hedge fund or a compliance reporting firm or an auditing firm of some type, um, it is a great opportunity. Uh, if you have accounting skills and hedge fund knowledge, then you're in high demand and you combine that with three to five years of experience and you know there's many funds that are looking for someone like yourself so um, that is a great you know path to pursue if you have the skills and um, passion to go that route um, someone here is talking about advice on starting a hedge fund we're actually going to have a separate webinar on hedge fund startups uh, so stay tuned for that also you could visit hedgefundstartupguru.com and that way you can uh, get some you know, custom advice there on starting your own hedge fund. Uh, let's see here. List of interest let's see what other questions we have here. Um, somebody's asking what the first steps they should take uh, to start their career in the hedge fund industry. And I would just encourage, you know, the very first steps is just to literally write down an action plan for the next 10 days get in the habit of taking action and seeking the internship hedge fund managers in your city you can meet with service providers maybe you could complete an internship with and um, you know create an action plan would be the very first thing I would suggest that you do let's see here somebody else is saying I'm a student um, in South Africa looking for hedge fund career advice um, we have a website called hedge fund hedgefundscareer.com and that website is free to access it's just a blog it provides career advice you might want to visit that website for more advice or go to the resource link we provided a few minutes ago at uh, hedgefundcertification.com here's another question saying should we start with little experience at a strongly recognized company or strong experience at a little known company I personally have always found it valuable to get strong experience at a little known company and here's why. When it comes down to meeting with a business owner or a principal of a business and convincing them they should hire you over the other five or twenty candidates they're looking at, at the end of the day everybody cares about results. There's politics and there's culture and there's you know people have friends in the industry they might want to hire over you. But most people care about results more than anything and business is business and people want to get things done. So if you have great experience and while you're working in a quote unquote strong experience role, you just keep on expanding your responsibilities, it's going to be much more valuable, I believe, than working at a large firm but having very little responsibility. And um, I know that the time is running short here and it might cut us off in just about a minute and a half or two minutes. So if it does, I apologize, but I'm just going to keep on answering questions here just to try to provide some more value right before it's over. Um, the book I referenced um, related to who you're going to be in two years was called the, Str the Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale and that is a great book um, I've actually have it on audio and I put it on my iPod I've listened to it at least 20 times um, it's just a good reminder listen to it once a month or once a quarter and it kind of keeps you on track the other book is called um, Business Success principles and um, I believe it's by Jack Canfield and that if you're going to read one business book this whole year that book is worth its weight in gold literally uh, if you follow the advice in that book uh, it'll provide you a lot of value and you could read that book literally you know once a week or read just one chapter a week for a few years and still get value out of it so I really encourage you to look into obtaining that book Let's see here. I'm starting a hedge fund and I want to hire professionals uh, in different areas including capital raising. Do you host a site where I can post positions? Um, I'm pretty sure many of the people on this call would like to connect with you um, about the people that you'd like to hire for your hedge fund startup. So if you'd like to um, 
send me an email. We can post your job on hedgefundblogger.com. We post positions there once every month or two. We post a new job to the website. So if you'd like to send us an email at, uh, actually you can send it to me personally at richard at hedgefundgroup.org, then we can uh, figure out how to get that posted to our site. Let's see here. Here's a question about if I'm a mid-career professional in unrelated career, unrelated industry, how receptive are employers for hiring me into a position in the hedge fund industry? So for you, uh, if you have experience outside the hedge fund industry, what you have to really do is carefully construct your unique selling proposition. Find out what three skills, three strategies or skills you picked up outside the industry stress those and combine that with just an overload of specialized knowledge. Everybody else who may be applying for positions may have more industry experience than you. But if you can have tangible, specialized knowledge, um, show them things you've done, projects you've worked on, internships you've completed, um, or how much you know, uh, combine that with the skills you can bring from the other industry and maybe try to make it a risk-free proposition for them, like work free for two weeks and then you'll prove that after two weeks you're going to be a huge asset to their company and they're not going to want to let you go. Um, that, that can really work. Um, I've used that myself and I know it works because CEOs and entrepreneurs want people who understand uh, risk management and running a business and when you take away the risk you make it pretty easy for them to take you know the very small risk of letting you try to help them grow their business. Oh, I get this question a lot. I'm 35 years old. Is this an age barrier um, or is there an age barrier? I would say absolutely no. I've, I know people who came from an insurance industry um, at the age of 48 and started working in hedge funds. Sometimes hedge fund managers would rather hire experienced professionals who are humble but still hungry to learn um, because they'll be more responsible employers, especially a small hedge fund might need to trust you with a lot of responsibility. So if you're older, you're more likely not to just randomly not show up at work or not follow directions or not know how to professionally write an email. There's a lot of things that, um, for example, our business has experienced while working with interns or entry-level employees that um, you just take for granted when you work for people that have five or ten years or twenty years of experience in any business field. So I wouldn't discount that experience. You're on an even you know, playing field with everybody else. How important could a lawyer be for a hedge fund and what is the lawyer's role in the industry? Um, lawyers help with the formation of a hedge fund, usually a very expensive and detailed process. They also help with the ongoing business, you know, legal demands that any business has in terms of patents or trademarks or copyrights or employment laws. They also um, also get, you know, advice to hedge fund managers for marketing related issues or investor redemption related issues. And then the last area is compliance. A lot of lawyers work in the compliance area as well. So it's very important. If you're looking to work in that area, it's, it's a growing field. And there's many service providers who are growing their business every year you could potentially work for. There's another question, will an MBA make me employable in the hedge fund industry? An MBA alone, or really anything alone on its own, will not make you employable. Uh, it's really a combination of things. It has to be a combination of things. Many people ask us, if we earn the CHP designation, can you promise me a position in the industry? And we can't. And nobody could honestly or ethically say, um, you know, complete our university course and we'll guarantee you you'll get a job because it's based on so many different factors. But an MBA does help, and this is why most businesses are small businesses within the hedge fund industry. And if you work for a service provider, this is also true. And having your MBA gives you that round skill set to wear many hats. So I would include the MBA and combine that with, you know, kind of a diverse skill set, you know, item within your USP. But I would really make sure you combine that with other things. If you rely on just the fact you have your MBA and kind of lean back on that, I don't think you'll be very uh, successful. Um, with an MBA, here's another question about age. Key different. Um, here's information. Let's see here. We already answered that question. How to break into the hedge fund industry for a person who has not worked for a while. 
Um, my advice for professionals who have not worked for a while but want to break into the industry is, again, look back at what experience and skills you do have, move up the learning curve, build your specialized knowledge, you know, go overboard on your specialized knowledge within the niche you want to work in. If you want to work, for example, I really wanted to work in hedge fund marketing and capital raising. So what I did was I went overboard on showing I had specialized knowledge in this area. And what I did was I looked at pitch books that are often put together for hedge fund managers. And it's when you're marketing a hedge fund manager, you put together a 30-page pitch book. And what I did was I showed that I know what a pitch book was and how it was constructed by creating a pitch book on myself and pitching my specialized knowledge and experience to the third-party marketing firm. And that's what got me hired, was showing that uh, ambition and hard work, because I spent probably 10 hours putting together this pitch book just for this one company, trying to get this one position that didn't even exist. I was just trying to convince him to hire me. So if you do something like that, you can definitely still get into the industry. Um, excellent books on hedge funds, recommendations of books. Um, if you go to hedgefundbookstore.com, that is the best place to get the books that we would recommend. Those are the best books. I'm actually coming out with my own book um, from Wiley on May 3rd. I think it's being published. and It'll be available on Amazon. And it's, it's going to be called The Hedge Fund Book, a training manual for hedge fund professionals. And let's see what other questions we have here. How much is the CHP designation? Um, it's $550 for level one, $650 for level two, or if you register for both at once, you can save $300 and both levels just cost $899. Um, what opportunities do you see occurring with fraud consultants in the hedge fund industry? Most consultants related to fraud, um, there's really three areas I guess where you could work as a fraud consultant. You could work as an independent fraud consultant, which is the most unique and rare um, place to work, but it's growing for sure. Uh, the next place would be to work for a fund to fund. They're always looking to hire external consultants to improve their due diligence or hire consultants to improve it. Um, also, third place to work would be an institutional consulting firm. Um, they're firms that do research on hedge funds and try to screen them and create a very short list or create a portfolio for their clients. So by you know, working for an institutional consulting firm, you could help them in assessing fraud uh, or potential fraud within you know, different hedge funds. Tips for finding hedge fund startups in my area. This is relatively difficult, but you can set up Google Alerts, which is what I do for many different areas of my career and business. You just go to Google, type in Google Alerts, you can click on the first result, set up alerts so that when anytime the word hedge fund startup or, you know, new hedge fund or launched hedge fund or launching a hedge fund is mentioned anywhere, within news articles, videos, um, blog posts, news websites, you'll be notified by email um, either as it happens or once a week. And that way you can keep on top of all the times that new hedge funds are mentioned. And that will help you identify, you know, opportunities to market, to uh, connect with them. The three fields of specialization and CHP level two. Um, yes, you can specialize in all three if you'd like, or two out of the three. Um, the only rule is you have to complete CHP level one before you do CHP level two. That just assures everybody has the base knowledge that they need. Upcoming hedge fund networking events in New York. Uh, yes, we're going to have a hedge fund networking event in New York, actually, um, this upcoming spring. Let me look up the date real quick. I believe that's on uh, June 17th. We'll have a networking event in New York. And it'll be free to everybody within the CHP, free to everybody within Hedge Fund Premium. And there might be an at-door cost for the general public, but it's usually $20 or less. So uh, hopefully it'll be free to everybody, but it just depends on the sponsors we get. Um, but June 17th is that networking event date in New York. Do I suggest an MBA or a Master's in Quantitative Finance? or a professional certification is the best way to get into the hedge fund industry. I think they're trade-offs. Um, if you want to be a quant analyst, there really is a huge amount of knowledge that you need to move up the learning curve on, and I would suggest getting the quant degree along with a professional certification. 
if you already have a college degree and you're looking to get into the industry in the next six months or next year, then I would suggest just taking the professional certification program. Or if you're a student still completing your undergraduate, I would suggest completing the professional certification program. But if you are someone who completed their undergraduate degree a long time ago and more than seven years ago, you may want to consider, or if you never got a business degree and it was in some other field, you may want to consider getting an MBA um, alone or an MBA with a certificate, a certification program of some type, just to show that your knowledge is very uh, up to date. Because some people, you know, even as, you know, though it's illegal to discriminate based on age, if you've been educated, you know, 20 years ago, that might, you know, the benefit of that education might be discounted a bit. But oftentimes your experience will more than make up for that. Oftentimes the experience is worth five times more than a university degree that has nothing to do with hedge funds, simply because it's not a one-to-one -one match of what you're learning in school. Um, how is the hedge fund industry in Brazil and Sao Paulo? Um, it's better than I thought it would be. Um, I first came here to Brazil two years ago, and I met with a hedge fund manager for lunch. And what's interesting is there's a lot, there's a higher percentage of CTA funds, uh, commodity trading advisors here, than there are in the United States. And there's about 300 hedge funds based here in Sao Paulo, maybe another 100 throughout the rest of Brazil, including Rio. But Sao Paulo is really the business capital of Brazil, as well as the hedge fund capital. Um, what's interesting, though, is the hedge funds don't have to manage as much money to produce enough profits um, to live off of or to hire a staff. So it's actually a better place to run a hedge fund for some people. Um, English is quote unquote the business language, but you really do have to speak Portuguese to to get around well here. Um, but it's interesting that there are that many hedge funds down here. When I first came here, I did not think that Brazil is a big hub for hedge fund activity. But now I'm actually spending uh, three to five months out of the year in uh, places like Brazil and Russia and Europe uh, connecting with hedge funds in these markets because there are so many of them. Do we have CHP participants in India? Uh, yes, we do. Um, we've had probably 10 or 20 from India. Um, we've actually had participants from 30 countries so far within the program. There's a couple more questions here about the CHP, but I really want to focus more on career advice. So if you have another question about the CHP and I haven't answered it, please just uh, email us at uh, team at hedgefundcertification.com. And here's another question about more webinars. We are going to be having many more webinars. Uh, several of these will be available to the public for free at least a few times a year. Uh, some of these will be available only to people within Hedge Fund Premium. I would say the majority of them are going to be available only within hedgefundpremium.com. And then some of them will not be available to the public. But we will have more uh, related to hedge fund careers in the future um, about hedge fund internships and just growing kind of like your specialized knowledge asset in the industry uh, down the road. Actually, uh, if you visit hedgefundblogger.com tonight at, I think, around 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or anytime tomorrow if you go to hedgefundblogger.com, you'll see a list of future webinar topics that we're going to be coming out with in 2010. And some of those might be interesting to you if you're looking to specialize within a certain area or start a hedge fund or um, you know, learn more about careers in this space. So I think that I've almost made it through all the questions. Just one second here. I need to obtain a green card. Can I do that by working for a hedge fund? Um, I've gotten this question several times. It's it's very difficult, but it can be done. I think it would be easiest for you to first come to the United States, maybe on an educational, you know, I can't give legal advice or visa advice, I'm not an expert, but it might be easier to come on, on a, you know, a visitor's visa or an educational visa and then interview and meet with hedge funds as much as possible face-to-face -face and convince somebody that you can provide so much value to their business that it's worth sponsoring your green card. Um, it's a hard sell to do from a distance. Um, and it probably just won't happen if you're trying to do it over the internet. Are there hedge funds trading fixed income securities? Uh, yes, there definitely are. Um, one thing about the hedge fund industry is it's just become more and more diverse over the last few years. 
which I believe just creates a really strong foundation for the whole industry. And, um, for example, when the banks were doing poorly, they stopped lending to businesses. Hedge funds started lending to businesses more, lending to commercial real estate projects more. Um, now there's hedge funds that have moved up that learning curve, and they know how to do this in a profitable way and will forever hold some of that market share away from banks. That's just an example of how hedge funds are becoming more diverse, um, just in you know dozens of different ways. Let's see here. How many hedge funds are based out of India? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, technically, I think you can't even call yourself a hedge fund if you're based in India. Um, but that said, there are investment groups based in India, trading houses which serve hedge funds in India, and there's some huge service providers based in India. So there's still plenty of opportunities to work in the industry there. I'm from Russia with marketing experience. I'd like to work in the hedge fund industry. Is it too late to start at the age of 28? Um, no, not at all. Um, I was recently at a banking conference in Moscow, and I was speaking to people about um, capital raising and authority construction processes. And um, it was interesting. They said that hedge funds there aren't widely inv invested in yet, but everybody agrees it's going to be a huge growing trend. The resistance is that lots of wealthy people in places like Russia and India and even Brazil is that lots of wealthy people and business owners have their money tied up in real estate. They know real estate. They trust it. It doesn't lose their money. And they're a little bit scared to get started on hedge funds. And combined with that, there's a bit of a language barrier and not many domestic investment funds in Russia are actually hedge funds. So in the future, you know, that's changing. Um, so I think you'll be in a great position if you get hedge fund experience now. But right now, it's still in a, you know, a growth mode. Um, do you need a strong mathematical computational background to get a hedge fund job? Uh, no, you do not. Um, I am a personal example of this. I've actually taken statistics uh, four times. Um, I took it in my undergraduate and failed. It was the only, pro only class I failed during my undergraduate program. I took it again, but I got a C minus. Then during my MBA program, um, I took it and I got a C. And it turns out a C can't count towards your grade within the MBA program I was in. So I had to take it a fourth time, which I finally passed it by using a tutor along the way and going to every help session. And my point there is that um, I've moved forward in the hedge fund career successfully every year making progress, and I am very poor at mathematical computational work. It just all goes back to that three-circle strategy. If you want to work in an area that you're passionate about and uses your DNA and can make a lot of money, then you're naturally not going to apply for positions that require math experience if you're horrible at math. Um, so just really stick to that three-circle strategy, and you won't run into any problems of, oh, this job, you know, to work in the industry, I need this experience, but I'm horrible at that. Um, that should just never be the case if you're following the three-circle decision-making strategy. I want to be a hedge fund trader um, at an investment bank. How can I work in the hedge fund industry as well? Um, investment banking jobs are great, but hard to, hard to obtain. I think a better route is to work for a trading service provider or a hedge fund um, that's just starting up. A hedge fund that's just launching. Those are the two best areas. You could also look into working for a prime brokerage firm. Uh, they handle a lot of trading and execution uh, services for hedge funds. What consulting do you offer people wishing to start a hedge fund? Um, you know, we don't offer a lot of direct consulting for hedge fund startups, but this is the one time where we might be able to work together because we're actually creating a hedge fund launch kit, video audio workbook program for people that want to start their own hedge fund. And we need some hedge funds to participate within interviews and um, case studies within that um, kind of product creation pro progress. So if you'd like to, you can email me at richard at hedgefundgroup.org and we can connect and discuss ideas about that. And you can also get some free articles at hedgefundstartupguru.com.
for someone working as a vice president in a product control function in an investment bank, how difficult is it to move within a hedge fund to the hedge fund career? Um, I think the tricky challenge for you will be that if you're in charge of products, you know, management within an investment bank, the best fit would honestly be a large hedge fund uh, where you can help them maybe in marketing or managing multiple strategies being offered. But the challenge would be a large hedge fund is going to want in industry experience. So I think your best bet would be to maybe not work for a hedge fund startup. You probably have higher compensation requirements than maybe most hedge fund startups could um, accept. But what you could do is go to a fast-growing emerging hedge fund manager, which has somewhere between 20 million and 200 million in assets under management. And maybe they can't afford somebody with 10 years of hedge fund experience, but they need someone who's responsible, can be productive, produce results, and maybe they're coming out with multiple hedge fund strategies now. So that would be my best recommendation for you. Get access to some hedge fund databases or directories and aim for those kind of mid-level hedge funds to work for. Um, there's some questions here about the CHP again, but please just email us for those. There's some questions about some competing designations, but uh, just email us those questions as well. Do you see a place for professionals from other industries to transition into the hedge fund business? Uh, yes, service providers and hedge fund startups are the best places to go. Who owns the hedge fund group? Can you tell me more? Um, I actually own the hedge fund group myself. Um, I started the business. It was a one-person business about three years ago. And um, it's actually a story I haven't shared too often about how it actually started. I was raising capital in a third-party marketing firm, and I started a blog writing about everything. I was writing about living in Boston at the time. I was writing about raising capital, about sales, and it turned out nobody cared about Boston, and not many people cared about sales, but they read a lot of my articles on hedge funds I wrote. So I just started writing every day on hedge funds, and all of a sudden I had a 1,000 people a day coming to my hedge fund blog, and I just kept on writing every single day. This is uh, Jeffrey Gittimer recommends, and eventually the traffic got so large, I was able to start holding networking events, um, partner with others to create training programs like the CHP, um, and grow in our networking group. And it took about a year to get 5,000 members in the hedge fund group, and then over the next two years, we grew it up to 33,000. So it's really kind of uh, grown quickly recently with members all over the world. And you can network with them for free by joining at hedgefundgroup.org and then networking with them through linkedin.com. So I hope that didn't sound too promotional, more just interesting about how the hedge fund group came, along, came about. But it really just came from demand, from what we saw in the blog. People are asking us for a way to network with each other, and then we, they're just asking us for a ton of career advice, resume feedback, how to get started in the hedge fund industry, how to learn more about hedge funds. And instead of holding a whole bunch of seminars and conferences, we created the CHP designation program. How do we meet with hedge fund managers? Uh, it's just like any other business. You just want to you know, identify the names of hedge fund managers you want to meet with, um, obtain their contact details, and then as often as possible, meet with people in person. The more in-person meetings you can have, the more effective it's going to be, the faster you'll move forward. And I've done informational interviews over the phone and asked for email advice, and it still works very well. But you know, hour for hour, dollar for dollar, you're going to get more bang for your buck by trying to meet with hedge fund managers in person uh, that live within maybe a couple hour drive where you live. How should one approach hedge fund managers for networking? Any specific tips related to cold calling? Um, I've done a lot of cold calling, and it could be a relatively painful process. Um, so if you can do it so that you have a lead-in so you don't seem like a cold call, and then you kind of move forward past that painful process. If you live near them, then suggest to meet in person, just send them a two-line email. It's much more casual and you know, non-threatening uh, or alarming when somebody sends you that type of email. Also, um, make sure that if you're trying to reach out to a lot of different hedge funds, that you consider going to hedge fund networking events and um, try networking with hedge funds there because they're always you know, showing up to the events in New York or, or other cities. And if you want a list of the events we offer, they're posted on hedgefundpremium.com. OK. 
Okay, a few more questions here. I thought we were almost done, but we have a few more. Will this webinar be presented again in the future? Um, no, it won't. We were actually going to charge $97 for the webinar. And then the more we thought about it and about our whole business model, the more we realized that we're just, you know, should just give away the whole thing. And it's just going to come around in the end if we provide a lot of value to everybody on the call. So uh, we're not going to make it available again, though. Um, we'll have a different webinar available maybe later this year. The exception to that is if you're within the CHP program, you'll have access to it within Hedge Fund Premium. Where can we find resources for compliance requirements for hedge funds? Um, if you'd like to email me, I can send you towards a couple of resources on compliance requirements. It's uh, Richard at hedgefundgroup.org. And um, there's no one great place online, but I can point you towards a few links. What is the minimum capital required to start a hedge fund? This is a great question. Um, the answer is there is no minimum. Um, when I was in college, I got excited about working for the hedge fund, you know, in hedge funds. And at one idea, I had the exciting idea that I wanted to be, you know, one of the youngest hedge fund managers ever, and I was going to start my hedge fund with ten thousand um, dollars. The reality is, starting a hedge fund can be very expensive. If you do it the quote unquote right way, using all the industry best practices, even if you're frugal. You're looking at thirty to sixty thousand dollars or more. Um, if you spend the average amount, you're looking at probably fifty to eighty thousand or a hundred thousand to launch. And many people spend a couple hundred thousand dollars launching their hedge fund. You have to look at this as a a five year payback period business, where you know it might take you five or anywhere between four and seven, really, but maybe five full years or more before the business is actually you know, pumping out profits for you. So you have to have, you know, a wealthy spouse, a trust account supporting you, a side uh, income business. Uh, maybe you own a small business. You can have someone else run it for you while you run your hedge fund maybe. Um, or you just have enough wealth built up. You can run this hedge fund. Or you get seeded by somebody. Somebody provides you with a couple hundred thousand or a million or two million dollars in capital to start trading with. So you have some chance of producing some income your first few years. So you really just have to plan for that. But there is no minimum uh, amount, really. I know many people that have started hedge funds with 100000 and they manage many million dollars right now. People don't know about hedge funds in Turkey. Uh, how can I connect with a trader of a hedge fund who can help me be a hedge fund trader? Uh, That's a great question. There's many places around Europe or even in America. Um, for example, I have relatives that live in Nebraska. And many people in Nebraska have never heard of heard of hedge funds, except for maybe seeing them in the newspaper, or something bad about them in the newspaper, maybe. So um, it's important to realize that lots of service providers work, especially research-based service providers, work globally with clients. And so you should really focus on service providers and focus on ones where you can complete maybe a research role on a global basis for those service providers. That'd probably be my best piece of advice there. Uh, and also, there's new hedge funds being start up, started up around the world, um, thousands within Europe um, every couple of years. So make sure and keep that in mind. All right, so that's going to wrap up all the time we have for today. I do see another, wow, probably 70 or 80, probably over 100 more questions here. So I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of those. We went about a half hour over already. Um, if you still have a question, please do send it to us. Um, you can send it to richard at hedgefundgroup.org, or if it's about CHP designation, send us an email at team at hedgefundcertification.com. So thanks, everybody, for participating, and uh, hopefully we'll connect again soon.